Hello and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Eater from Bit Heroes Radio, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this podcast, Bit Heroes Radio, with Bitverse Andy from Bit Heroes Radio. Hello, World Eater and lovely listeners of Bit Heroes Radio. This is Bitverse Andy coming at you from the studio. I am your co-host for this episode of Bit Heroes Radio, and I want to give you all a very, very warm welcome to our amazing podcast, Bit Heroes Radio. (laughs) That's that's so much Bit Heroes Radio. (laughs) At least they'll know what they're listening to, yeah? (laughs) True, true. Let's go ahead and kick it off with the agenda, though. So, first off, we are going to have a discussion about the Feline Festival, followed by the event shop for the Feline Festival, of course. Then we're going to go on to everyone's favorite segment, Fashion Heroes. Followed by that, we're going to have a wiki highlight, viewer questions, and then, of course, finishing it off with comment of the week. Yeah, so kicking off with the Feline Festival. Um, So in-game, and this is kind of a surprise to everyone. I think it was announced like the day before it dropped. Um, but a brand new event in Bit Heroes, Feline Festival. Um, if you look at like their Discord announcement, it mentions, you know, they're doing it for June. That is Adopt a Cat Month. Uh, and in game, they're celebrating with the Feline Festival. So it's a brand new event, never been seen, coming with all sorts of new like cat themed cosmetics. And, uh, you know, the Sardinex is dressed up as a cat. The Sardinex currency is called a gray fish, you know, basically cat food, stuff like that. I honestly really like the vibe of this. And to me, the aesthetics of everything is just super, super cool. I like cats. I'm a cat guy personally. I love dogs too. But um, I don't know. I just, I really like this. I love the cosmetics they brought out. I think they're pretty spot on in my opinion. They're pretty good. But let's go ahead and jump into the event shop. I'm actually really excited to talk about this because it is slightly different from the previous ones. And by that, I just mean a few things came back and something new has arrived. So just to start off with the cosmetics, honestly, to me, the cosmetic bo- the cosmetics box is like a must grab. I feel like all of these are just so funny. They're adorable. And some of the cats just look, they look wired on catnip. I'll just say that. <laughs> <clears throat> no, yeah. And speaking of cosmetics, um, even outside of the event shop, in the gold shop, well, the featured like normal Bit Heroes shop, like there's a shop pack right now. It's called the feline pack. And usually like you see these like flagship cosmetics going for, you know, five, 10 bucks or whatever, but they're actually selling it for 3 million gold, which I think is a big dub. Yeah. Uh, and it's honestly really cool too. Like the gold cat with the shades. I love it. Completely agree. I love the animation and the fact that it's a matching set just makes it all better. So that's a huge W because any player can easily pick that up. Um, really, really nice. For the event shop, I love the materials box as always. Cosmetics, chess, spot on. Um, Energy box, honestly, I really welcomed that addition a while back when it did come in, so I'm glad it's here to stay. Now, going to a box that actually did see some change, the boost box. Now, I just wanted to say that the heart core is in the boost box right now, and that was previously removed recently. It was removed from this box, and it kind of disappointed some players because... To be honest, in my opinion, it's not too crazy broken. Uh, Capture rate and item find um, doesn't scream broken to me. Most of the time when um, NFT players farm this, um, they kind of want to get an experience boost so they can, you know, help grind for their guild honor and get more stuff. So I feel like it's perfectly fair to leave this here, even if NFT holders can get it on all their accounts. I think it's just a fantastic, fantastic addition to this box, and I hope it's here to stay. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we got all the classic uh, major scrolls and tomes and whatnot. But yeah, seeing the hardcore is awesome. You know, I'm definitely trying to pick that up on all my all my heroes. You can't go wrong with the Odegore and the Bite Gore is just really, really nice as well. So to me, the boost box is a huge W. Um, the Bit Gore is there, of course. And there is something new. You want to tell oh, them yeah. about it, Andy? Oh, yeah, there's definitely something juicy in the Sardinex shop. Correct me if I'm wrong, World, but I think this is the very first time where we've ever seen Ultra Gore 
in the Sardinex shop. Now it is going for a whopping six thousand, six thousand gray fish. Um, I will say I think the reason that they sort of brought this out is because there was a bug during the first week of Feline Festival. So unfortunately, as this video comes out, it's too late to take advantage of it. Um, and whether you call it a bug or not, but basically invasion was dropping crazy amounts of gray fish. So. A lot of people that farmed the first week are going to be able to pick up this Ultra Gore. And it's just such an awesome addition to see basically people get this in the game without spending their gems. And it's also crazy because not only is it new to Sardinex, but it is in a way the only time they've ever had a quote unquote free Ultra Gore available yeah. to players. Most of the time it's behind a huge gem paywall and you have to get really, really lucky. Um, which some players get it on their first roll. You know, I was lucky enough to get that on one of my alts on my first roll. Really? And some players don't get it till their very last roll, which can cost upwards of 30,000 gems, which is a lot of gems, especially for a free to player or your average player. So just seeing that here and having it paired so well with that amazing invasion, um, I guess, bug or accident that happened is just, it's amazing. Not only was it paired well with that. Um, the invasion of choice was also really solid because you can easily farm a really good familiar there, which was Jello. So it was just a huge W for the first week of Feline Festival. Um, a lot of players snagged the Ultra Gore, and don't worry, guys, it seems like it's still here for another seven days. Um, so go ahead and snag it. Trust me, it's it's worth farming for. If you really think about it, getting paid out an Ultra Gore is super super good because in the long run, you can get a lot of levels, a lot of experience, a lot of honor a lot of gold, a lot of gems, a lot of everything. So this is definitely worth farming right now. Yep. I mean, it's pretty pretty clear that Ultra Gore is best boost in the entire game, so get your hands on this if you can. Speaking of Ultra Gores, World Eater, you're much, much higher level than me and, and all that. Have you used Ultra Gores before? Yeah, I've used four Ultra Gores, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't agree with the way I use them. Uh oh. <laughs> a, a normal difficulty uh, dungeon user? <laughs> no, I uh, <laughs> I used um, a good amount on Zeals, right? But um, I mainly used them on, I guess, Coraliner, a Coraliner farm, and just to get some levels. So I used two of them farming for Tethius and stuff. But I also used a lot of them, believe it or not, on, <laughs> it's horrible to say, flags or dungeons oh. farming familiars to get all that capture rate so i can just easily grind up some familiars um i don't recommend it the only reason i did it is because i did a whole team of extort was able to easily clear it out and that's only towards the end of my run when i was kind of running a little low on my zeals or on some other ultra gores i know for two of them i used them on invasion that was before i knew that it really wasn't the best place to use your Ultra Gore. Um, I kind of figured that out towards my last two. So you guys want to know the best spot to farm your Ultra Gores? It's usually going to be in World Boss. Dude, all the XP maxers just cringed around the world, dude. I know. <laughs> I cringe right now just thinking about it. Oh, my God. But you, have you used an Ultra Gore before, Andy? No, no. I uh, Funny enough, like just a couple weeks ago, when Ultra Gore was in the shop, I, I finally was looking at my gem count and everybody knows this, the shop has been a little bit dry. So I had a big old stack of gems and I, I sent it. Got it on my eighth pull, which is really pretty solid. Um, so I got one Ultra Gore there and then now I'm picking up this one from Feline Festival. So I've got two on deck. Oh. Um, I've been doing like a lot of research on how to prepare for it and stuff. And basically I'm trying to get like a fast clear triple x stored build ready and then i've got more than six thousand zeals so i feel prepared on that end but yeah just just want to make sure i can take maximum advantage of this thing honestly i say ask players ask around guys i know a lot of you have snagged an ultra gore um just from this event may, maybe some of you got it from the ultra box that was out not too long ago and if you got it, both of them, congrats. Like Andy, congrats, Andy. Honestly, that's amazing. Yeah, thank but you, I highly recommend asking around uh, some popular players like Oliver Noko, um, Zombie Slayer, 
ask a bunch of players that have already used their Ultra Gores for the most optimal way to farm it and how much resources they use. Because although you have an Ultra Gore, you don't want to run it on raids. I'm going to say this again. Raids is the worst place to run your Ultra Gore. The only advantage you'll have on there would be, one, the speed. Two, um, the capture rate and maybe some experience. But the thing is, it's it's just not worth it, guys. It's just not worth it. It's It takes way too long for a raid. The only benefits only come around once in that whole raid, and that's going to be pretty much bribing or sorry, persuading a legendary familiar. So to me, raids just avoid completely with your Ultra Gore. Um, for now, stick to World Boss if you don't feel like asking around, but definitely ask around because to me, it's really important to know what to do with your Ultra Gore. Yeah, there's definitely gamers that have done numerous <laughs> Ultra Gores and they've got some amazing tips. So, but um, sadly, if you did miss the Ultra Gore in your first week here, uh, it's going to be really difficult to pull out 6,000 gray fish, uh, especially since still, sadly, we're not getting any of the Sardinex currency from PVP. You know, this has been happening for the last few events. I think players have been a little bit salty. Um, the PVP no longer rewards Sardinex currency. Um, and now, you know, if you're someone who's just just logged in on week two of Feline Festival, <laughs> you're staring down that Ultra Gore, you need 6,000 gray fish. Gosh, it's going to be tough for you. Yeah, PvP was the go-to for fast event currency farming. Now, it's not. I would say D4's World Boss, mm -hmm. and those are probably your only two right now. Unfortunately, I don't think GBG gives it to you either. Thank God there was no GBG this time. Otherwise, it would definitely be really hard to grind for all that. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I, I really hope they bring back the PvP and GBG, even if they bring it back at a reduced rate. That would be really nice, because... All the free to players out there, they still rely on that PvP and GVG farm uh, for that week. The GVG is out during an event like that. So hopefully they bring it back. If not, I mean, at least if they buff it in other areas like they are with that Ultra Gore and putting the Heart Gore back in the boost box, I'm a little happier with that. But yeah, uh, we just need a little more places to farm the currency whenever there is a GVG and a PvP week. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, I kind of want to go to the shop as well, although it isn't really 100% tied to the event. Usually players are excited about the normal shop during an event because they tend to have an event sale with like a certain item or a certain box or bundle. So unfortunately, the only thing we do have is that feline pack. And although it is really clean and I really do love this um, cosmetic like we did see before, I just wish we also had another pack to buy for those pay to players similar to the ones that we've had in the past where it would come with a boost, some resources and cosmetics, even if they sat out with the cosmetics or gave the exact same ones, uh, maybe in a different color or something, that would have been fantastic but yeah, just really wanted to buy something this event and nothing really stuck out to me so unfortunately, I didn't Yeah, and I'm in a similar boat where pretty much just sticking to the Sardinex shop and, and grabbing that feline pack yeah, but all in all, if I was going to rate this event, I would say it's definitely better than the last one, and I really do like this. So for me, it's definitely at least like a 7 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I think between the Feline Pack going for gold, the Sardinex uh, currency going crazy during week one in Invasion... Uh, them not reverting that, them not rolling it back, them saying like, hey, we're not going to change anything. You know, you have this week to go crazy. You know, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I jumped on stream like right away because everybody thought it was going to get rolled back or stopped. So there's a there's like an hour or two where I'm just pushing invasion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that was a lot of fun to, to jump on. People were trying to tell everybody in their guild and and, and pinging on Discord is is a energetic moment um so that was a lot of fun i'm glad they left it for the whole week and yeah i think also adding the ultra gore in the shop like just big dubs from from this event so and and the cat cosmetics they're super cute uh i as well i think world leader said he's a cat guy i as well am a cat guy so this is a good event very, i hope very it comes good back event. next year no for real it's like i hope they do more events similar to this um, even if it's oh. for other animals like dogs or anything like that, just events similar to this would be fantastic. Um, I do understand that this wasn't a full-fledged event, so no, guys, I'm not complaining that there was no 
sale in the shop because I know it wasn't a full event, but just saying if there was, I would have bought something. Tell, you know? me, uh, <laughs> tell me how you feel about the plus 50% everything boost instead of double dailies. So the plus 50% everything boost to me is a lot weaker than the double dailies because some people really like farming on certain days to take advantage of that one specific bonus. So I think the older way was a lot stronger, especially if you're looking out for experience or item find. Um, for capture rate and all that other stuff, it's whatever. But to me, it's just... Eh. It's nice to be able to farm a yeah. little bit of everything, though. So you can't really complain. I think for some days it's better. For some days it's worse. Uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Depending on what day of the week you really enjoy grinding might be worse. You know, if you're an item find Andy uh, and you usually play on like the Saturday boost where it's 75% XP or maybe that's Sunday, Saturday, or Sunday. I can't remember. But literally that won't be available during this event. You'll only get the plus 50. So it's a bit of a mixed bag for me yeah it seems like they're making tweaks to it and i'm welcome i'm welcoming them i i like seeing all the different things they're trying um different approaches just to see what us players like so it's cool that they're at yeah, least yeah. somewhat experimenting with it so huge w's all around in my opinion but yeah um to me that's plenty of talk about the feline festival <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to the next segment which is going to be fashion heroes all right so on our last episode, we had the esteemed World Eater versus Anto Man's Fashion Heroes. An absolute clash of titans here. And the winner. Can I get a drum roll, please? It was Anto Man's. Woo! No! <laughs> Guys, I lost so bad. It wasn't even funny. Like, I got flamed. Like. <laughs> I would have voted for Anto. That's how much he won by. So congrats, Antomans. Honestly, you're too savage, bro. Like, I'll never yeah. beat that savage. You look good, bro. Keep it up. Yeah, he literally flexed on you, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> but anyways, um, it brings me to, you know, I, I have a little bit of a heavy heart here. Unfortunately, since World Leader has lost in Fashion Heroes, we have... Um, you know, he lost the motivation to <laughs> continue with Fashion Heroes. So sadly, we will not be continuing this segment anymore. Yeah, I'm so salty. I just want to move on and repress that memory. <laughs> However, we're going to revisit a previous audience favorite segment, Weeky Highlights. <laughs> Speaking of Weeky Highlights, Andy, what does purification do? Well, world leader, I am so glad you asked. Purification grants an X percent chance to regain one SP after spending SP. Wow, so I could use an SP skill and get SP back? How OP! I know, right, world? How OP indeed. We want to give a huge thank you to the Bit Heroes Wiki editors for this week's wiki highlight. Thank you for everything that you guys do. W editors. <laughs> All right, so we're going on to viewer questions. Oh, wait, hold on. <clears throat> and for the next segment, viewer questions. We do have Small Brain asking, World, win 1K. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for all of you that world. may or may not know, Small Brain is actually Pocket Apple in game. Okay. So, Apple, win tier 21. Oh, that's when I'll get one K. <laughs> no, but what level are you in game right now, world? Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm barely measly nine fifteen, and as the people are gonna say nine fifteen, that's high, right? But no, like that is that's a long ways away from one K. Believe it or not. So, um, I do want to hit one K so badly this year, but it just really depends on. A lot of things, shop sales, stuff like that. So depending on how lore events is or whatever happens soon can really make a difference in that. So I want to aim for some time towards the end of this year, but I really don't see that happening. So it might be early next year. Really hard to tell. Wow. Well, at least you should at least have an ultra gorda to, to help get you there now. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to stock up like four or five of them before I really consider it. Dang. 
it's so crazy how big the XP numbers get <laughs> when you get up that high. Yeah, like for those of y'all that haven't seen him, I'm pretty sure you have. If you go to the leaderboards in town, just look at Gold Muddy. Oh, that guy cool. is a unit. He's a straight unit, man. So he's 1402. <laughs> I, I don't see anyone getting close to that literally at least until next year. So, and that's if someone goes really hard. So it's insane guys. It's insane. But yeah, one K not too sure. Probably going to be very late this year, very early next year. Um, I'm not really prioritizing experience currently. So, uh, although I'm like farming on, ex- go for it. Um, have you given any thoughts to your, when you get one K, have you given any thoughts to your one K cosmetic? So, that's the hard part is the one K cosmetic. Cause sometimes I think, okay, I want something like an armor, like a chest piece because no one really does that. Everyone has like a pet, an accessory, a mount or a weapon. Mount, yep. So the mount would be cool though. It's, it's just so hard. Like part of me wants a pet. I want a small version of my favorite pet or my favorite familiar, which would be Ignatus raw just flying next to me, a really small version of him or (laughs) something like that, or really, really cool, unique mount. Even if it's something like, I guess in Pokemon, they have shiny versions, maybe like a shiny version Mm. of one of my favorite familiars, like Chedza Naiki or something. I don't know. Um, I don't really have anything that I've really planned on it. So not really. It's kind of, kind of hard. What about you, Andy? Like when you hit 1K, what are you planning? I'm a very far from 1K, but I'm going to have as big as they'll let me an accessory that just goes up off my back billboard. Huge flashing lighters. Think like casino level billboard, like oh, in Las God. Vegas strip that <laughs> just says subscribe to bit for Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should that get was... like a plane that has a sign flying <laughs> over you saying like, like it's going to go in the background saying, please subscribe. That'd be so good. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just stand in front of Sardinex all day. People will be forced to read it. Yeah, it'll be good. Oh, man. <laughs> just block the guild door with your accessory so they can't get in there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That sounds amazing. But let's go ahead and go on to the next <laughs> question. This is going to be from Eagle Eye 6486 What do canoptic jars do? Are they even any good? So before we go ahead and answer that, there are two types of canoptic jars. There's canoptic jars, which no longer drop. They're actually useless. And there's canoptic jar jars, which is what I'm guessing they're speaking about. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let Andy answer this. (laughs) Yeah. So canoptic jar jars, they you get them by melting expedition or invasion mythics and the reason nobody knows what they do is because they're hardly used um (laughs) a lot of the invasion and expedition mythics are lower quality than like the standard ones you'll get from you know the tiers and stuff terrible don't get them (laughs) there you go um but basically when you um when you want to up tier the expedition and invasion mythics you need to use those canopic jar jars when up tiering. So they're an up tiering material, basically. The only thing I can really say about them that is cool is if for some reason, let's say you have a favorite mythic that you just like, just because you like it, you know? Um, let's say you got it in tier six, right? Let's say you really want to up tier it and you're just having the worst luck ever up tiering that mythic for, or farming that mythic for some reason. Um, you don't have to have a certain tier canoptic jar jar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's used for any tier. So just scrapping when you have a canoptic jar jar, you can use it to up tier a tier 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever tier you want. It's not tier specific. So that's the only one thing that I could say is really cool about them. If only they buffed the mythics in those events a little more, that would be better. I think maybe after a certain point, like a certain tier, um, adding elements or an added effect would be cool maybe a ultra version of that mythic that only a certain tier and above can get um to me that would be a nice buff but um until something like that happens or a rework happens these are pretty useless unfortunately yeah 
but yeah, thank you for your question. No, that's a that's a good question. And honestly, I had to do a little research. <laughs> so that was uh that was cool to learn. So thank you, Eagle Eye, and thank you, Smallbrain, for both of your viewer questions this week. Moving on to comment of the week. This one comes to us from the legend himself, Antomans, who said, Pleasure to be on the show and taking over from Andy. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, if you guys man. didn't know, um, last episode, episode 12, it was a little, well, yeah, I'll say it. I, you know, I'll let the cat out of the bag. You know, it's feline festival, uh, pun intended. The uh, last episode was posted on April Fool's Day. And there was a, a scene at the start where I basically quit Bit Heroes Radio and Antomans took my spot. So <laughs> it was an absolute honor having you take over my spot, Anto. Probably the best Probably the best Bit Heroes Radio as, as ah, probably the best episode of Bit Heroes Radio that's ever been out there. Uh, <laughs> just because it's Andy list, but uh, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Anto, for doing that for us. Well, I can say one thing: you're an amazing host or co-host, Andy. So I'm glad you're back. Um, oh. I'm glad you finally <laughs> I admitted saying that to Anto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you finally admitted a lattice is better, and we got over all that. So. No, 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 no. I'm no, sorry. I'm so glad that everything worked uh, out. This is slander. This is slander. But yeah, guys, that is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, wait. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, that's going to be the end of the <laughs> Hold on. All right, but that's going to be the episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Bit Heroes Radio. We hope you enjoyed listening to our radio discussion today about all things Bit Heroes. As always, we from Bit Heroes Radio want to give a big shout out to you Bit Heroes Radio listeners that make this podcast possible. <laughs> Gosh, the voice cracks me up. <clears throat> well, if you have any feedback, suggestions, or viewer questions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. You can also reach out to us on either of our channel discords, which you can find a link to in the description below. Before we sign off, we want to remind you to subscribe to both of our channels on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Please visit both my channel, World Eater, and Bitverse Andy's channel, Bitverse Andy, which you can find links to in the description below. And if you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a like and comment about how awesome Bit Heroes Radio really is. <laughs> oh, well, thank you again, everybody, for listening. And we'll catch you next time on Bit Heroes Radio. Peace. Nice. <laughs>